um, the sound is produced the same way. The instrument is structurally pretty similar if you think about it. Um, but because the players are independent completely of each other, um, and a recorder player has more control over the sound of the note as it continues, um, has more variety in the articulation, um, you can actually get more independence in the different lines and a little bit more ability to shape the phrases differently from how an organist would be able to do it. So I think these make really wonderful recorder ensemble pieces. I can't wait to play them again with real people in real time. But in the meantime, I've really enjoyed um, experimenting with different combinations of instruments on the different parts and putting these together. And I hope you're enjoying them.
bit about the specific instruments that I've chosen to use for these pieces. You'll notice that I'm doubling the bass lines on all of them, mostly in octaves, in one case in unisons. Um, by doing this, I get a couple of different possibilities. One is that it separates, it sets the bass line apart a little bit more from the others. So it makes the bass line a little bit more strong and a little bit more um, like the fundamental aspect of the piece that it is. Um, on an organ, you could have an eight foot and a four foot stop going at the same time. So by doing this with a, a bass at eight foot pitch and a bass at four foot pitch, I'm essentially doing the same thing. Um, so the contrabass that you've seen me use, that's this guy. This is a contrabass by Friedrich von Hühner, built in the 70s. Um, this is not based on a specific historical original instrument, but it is very much in a Baroque style of recorder. Um, and that plays with F fingerings. It really is a bass instrument at eight foot pitch. Um, I've also been doubling it with this, which is, a, we call it a great bass. This one is in C. Um, this is a Yamaha, also very much in a Baroque style. And because it's separated by half an octave from the F bass, um, it means that I have to make the octave transpositions in some cases in slightly different places, um, which means that the lines can be a little bit more continuous and I can make some choices um, as to where the unisons happen, where the octaves happen. And that gives me a little more flexibility with how I decide to interpret these bass lines. Um, in the case of one of the movements, I'm using two contrabasses in unison, which allows me to stagger the breathing and have fewer gaps. Um, and in some cases, I'm doubling the bass line completely strictly in octaves using this, which is also a Yamaha. This is, we call it either a bass or a basset. This is a bass only at four foot pitch. So it also has F fingerings. Its lowest note is only the F below middle C. It's only one note lower than a violin actually. But this is what we typically call a bass recorder. Um, this is also very much a Baroque style, although it's not based on a specific original. For the upper parts, I'm using a combination of most some Baroque instruments and a couple of modern instruments. Um, this is a Yamaha tenor. This is an alto um, by Bernalin. And I have a soprano over here by Merck. And then the other two instruments that you've seen look like this. This is a Mollenauer Helder tenor. And there's the alto version of this over here. It, looks really different, um, especially with all this metal stuff on it. You think, wow, that looks like a clarinet. It's really not like a clarinet. Um, all of this extra metal, because some of these rods are long, it makes it look more modern than it maybe really is. It mostly actually has the same exact fingerings as this Baroque tenor for the first two octaves. It has an extended range with one note lower at the bottom and a lot of notes higher at the top. Um, so I was able to do a little bit fewer octave transpositions by using these instruments than by using the Baroque ones. Um, and for the things when I have two tenors at the same time, even when both parts would both fit on the Baroque one, I think it's nice to use just two slightly different recorders because it makes the two parts sound a little bit more independent of each other. Um, if they're exactly identical, then they're a little bit if they cross over each other, you can't tell. Um, so I like to have a little bit more independence in the sound by having the two styles. And again, while this looks really modern, and it does actually have a lot of kind of new features that don't exist on Baroque recorders, um, those are sort of at the edges more. The main central way that it plays is just like a standard recorder. And as you can see, it works really nicely in a recorder ensemble. Um, it doesn't stick out. It has a lot of flexibility that makes it really well suited for this. Um, so even though it doesn't look especially historical, and really it's not, um, it works very, very well in ensemble with more typical Baroque style recorders. Um, in terms of how historical it really is to play these organ pieces as a recorder on 
ensemble. This is something that I think is a little bit interesting and ironic in that what we expect, what modern recorder players expect out of a recorder ensemble, in some ways is a little bit more like the Renaissance idea of having a matched set of instruments that are all playing kind of equally important parts. Um, and most of the way that the recorder is used in the Baroque is not structured that same way. You might use it as a treble instrument in a sonata, for example, with continuo on other instruments. Um, so I think there's a little bit of kind of interesting anachronism in taking this idea of the matched consort and applying it to Baroque music using Baroque style instruments. Um, but as I said, these really do make fantastic recorder music, and I hope you will agree and I hope you enjoy it, and thank you so much for listening. I will be, um, eventually over the next several months, I hope to record the other three of this six, set of six sonatas. I'll be uploading those onto my own YouTube channel over time, um, probably one movement at a time, we'll see. Um, but I hope you'll check it out, and thank you so much, and thank you for supporting SoHip, and I hope to see you in person next year. <laughs>